Okay, so this is Mteria OS for Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, this came out recently. I did have a bit of trouble getting it to work. I couldn't seem to expand the partition, but I worked out how to do it, and I'll show that a bit later on. Um, but uh, one thing that is a bit strange in this, and also in Consta Kang's Android on Raspberry Pi 5, is on websites, so this is the Mteria website, when you get a pop-up like this, you can't actually select it. So you can see here, the finger shows up, uh, but if I left click on it, nothing happens. It's absolutely fine on my touchscreen display, and I do get this occasionally on Consta Kang's image on certain things, I just can't seem to select it. If you tab, uh, you can get down to it, so as long as the page doesn't have loads and loads of information on it. So I'll just keep pressing tab until it gets to that bottom line. Must be there, there now. I've cut out quite a bit. Right, so can we... Oh no, it's still going. Now, enter. Yeah, so I can select it. So that bit's working, I just can't left click on it, which is very strange. Uh, so you'll see on here, uh, Android 14 for Raspberry Pi 5. It's available through Raspberry Pi Imager, but if you want the latest version, there's a Windows installer for it, which is what I used. Oh, and I can't click on the learn more, but I might be able to tab to that much quicker. There we go. So not sure if it's my uh, mouse keyboard combo. I'd be interested if others are having the same, uh, same issues, um, but in, on this page, You'll see about Raspberry Pi Imager, and they also mention about their own installer as well. But let's have a look at something that works really well on it. So Combat Master is a first-person shooter game, which you can play with a gamepad. And I've just switched to my YMAXIT touchscreen display because uh, it's definitely a lot easier. And on the game, I couldn't actually select to play the game because it was doing that same mouse issue. Uh, this is plugged in. To power, this is a, an official Raspberry Pi adapter. I've also got a USB cable going to my Pi 5, and uh, that's to give it touchscreen control. And this is an HDMI mini to HDMI cable plugged in as well. But uh, yeah, it works really, really well. So let's try Combat Master. I'm using an Xbox 360 controller, and I probably should have changed the sensitivity because this controller is very sensitive. But we'll give it a try. Oh. <laughs> Both died at exactly the same time. Right, let's do better than that. Oh, he's blue, that's me. Oh. Oh, crikey. He's really fast and really, really responsive, really playable. It's a really decent game. Oh, where did he go? I haven't quite got the slide yet. Oh. Luckily my uh, my teammate seems to be pretty decent. Nice. Well that was an easy kill. Oh, I needed to reload. <laughs> So I did try and get PUBG Mobile working and uh, it didn't work. I wonder if I needed to install it from the Play Store. It basically comes up with this download fail because the resource could not be found. But actually PUBG isn't a gamepad game, you can only play it with touch, so I wasn't too worried about that. I did try Fortnite, but unfortunately Fortnite needs a newer version of OpenGL, so it only supports 3.2 plus and this is 3.1 and if we go to if we go back and get an ADA64, this will show us what we're currently running. I'm not overclocked by the way, just, just running it stock. Yeah, display OpenGL ES 3.1. I'm not sure if we're going to get uh, OpenGL ES 3.2. It would certainly be good to see if Fortnite works well on there. But the Mesa version, and in fact all of this, is the same as Consta Kang's version. Apart from uh, the Consta Kang's version is RC4, so I guess that's a newer revision, but performance does seem to be pretty much the same on this. Mteria comes with its own settings. It, it's worth saying Mteria is uh, designed definitely towards uh, the commercial market, so it's something that businesses can use. There's remote access to it, which I showed in my previous Mteria video. But there is yeah, a lot of features, really nicely implemented. Android does work well on a Pi 5. 
Uh, although I did find that uh, things like Dolphin Emulator doesn't seem to detect my USB drive. So if I wanted to play a game, uh, normally what I do is go up to the hamburger menu at the top here, and then the USB drive would, would come up here. I've got a little USB stick plugged into my hub. If I go back to, uh, say, a file manager program, the USB device doesn't show up. But if I unplug my USB drive just behind here in a hub and then plug it in again, it does actually recognize it. it gives me the option of uh, connecting it, but it doesn't show up. Uh, and I guess it's probably a security thing. You can imagine in a commercial environment, you don't want someone plugging a USB device into an Android that's displaying in a store or something like that or a business. But uh, what I did find is I can get things on there with uh, remote access. So this Files app is really good. Files Plus, I think it's called. So if I go to local network, you can see it's picked up my router, which I've got a USB stick in. Um, and well, normally it shows up my Western Digital NAS drive, but uh, I think I need to restart it because it wasn't showing up on my phone yesterday. Uh, but that has been working fine. So let's shut this down and show you how to install it and more importantly how to expand the partition because that's what I had trouble with. I have been sent this Geekom Mini PC which is an i7 unit which uh, I'm really impressed with. I've got a video coming out on that soon but I'm going to use my little Melee Mini PC because that's what I've got the program already installed on. So I think you can use Raspberry Pi OS uh, to install it but uh, the reason I use the Windows installer is because it gives you an option for a nightly build. So I'm not going to bother with the latest version. So if I pick Raspberry Pi 5, choose OS, and what did it come under? General Purpose OS? Oh, it's not on there. Maybe it was on the Raspberry Pi 4 that it showed up on Imager. So if I do 4 and premium and paid for, yeah, Android and Terrier. But uh, yeah, so the Pi 5 version isn't there. It is available to download from their site, but I think you're better off to use their own tool, which is this one. And you can either log in with your account, or if you've downloaded the local image, you can skip that. And you can see I've got 14.0.6. And it gives you the option of having local or nightly build. So if I do sign in with my very long password created on my iPad, you can see that you get a beta version, a nightly version, what device? Raspberry Pi 5. Oh, so we've got a newer version now, look, 14.0.8. Now, rather than download that newer version, I'm just going to use the version that's locally on here. So if I skip that, because I've already downloaded it, select folder and continue. And then I need to plug in a drive. So I'll just plug an SD card into my mini PC and refresh. There you go. So it's picked up my SD card. So let's click on that and flash and OK. And you can see it gives you this command line update of what's going on. On their site, they do have information on how to expand the partition, but I couldn't get it to work. Uh, you have to put in the SHA and the MD5, but I'm not sure where you would put the overall size of your SD card. So that's just coming to an end now, just writing all the partitions. Yeah, that's finished. Now, if I go back, uh, we did have a show release notes here, so if I, well let's log in, then if we do pick nightly and Raspberry Pi 5, yeah 1408 is the latest version, show release notes, is that going to give me some information, automatic nightly build, okay so it doesn't tell me on there, that's a shame, maybe it only does that for other versions. So if we do beta and we pick Pi 4 for instance, that goes up to 14.2. Show release notes. Oh, there you go. So that does have information, but not on the nightly builds. That's a shame. Anyway, let's close this down. Boot this up for the first time. So pop that in and switch everything on. First boot always takes a while, but Android also can be fussy with displays. So if it doesn't boot on your display, maybe try it on another one or a TV. And down the bottom here, it says evaluation version, not for commercial use, system reboot after eight hours. You can register for free for home use on the Interior website, and it just gives you a code you can put in. I'm sure I showed it in my Pi 4 video and just fill in the usual language and so on. 
I'm using Ethernet, so I don't need to do anything with that. And I'm not going to activate this because I just want to show the expanding the partition and accept the license and start. Okay, so now if I drag up and go to settings and type in storage, oh, actually storage is here. You can see 59% used 1.65 gig free. And this is wrong because this is a 32 gig SD card. So we need to expand that partition. So let's shut this down. And I've booted up my version of KDE Plasma on Raspberry Pi, which is available to download separately if you want to try it out. It's based on Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, so I've just put the SD card in and you can see there's loads of partitions. Now normally I use Gparted, but that didn't work for me. So we start typing in disks, we've got KDE Partition Manager, which must be installed by KDE Plasma. So pop your password in. And as you can see, it's found the disk. So this would be what my operating system is on, an SSD drive. This is my RetroPie USB stick, which I always use. Uh, but what I need to do is find the partition, which is this one, the data partition, and I need to expand that. So hit resize, right click and resize. And then we need to drag this all the way and hit OK. And then apply and apply pending operations. And this takes quite a lot longer than Gparted to do this particular task. But then again, it does work. And Gparted, I've never had it fail really before, but it doesn't seem to work with Enteria. Okay, so that's finished, took just over two minutes. Let's hit OK, and now we can shut this down. We'll just have a look at the partition first of all. So if we scroll down to the one that said data, which is this one, you can see 20 gig. So let's close this down. And reboot from the SD card. And it's booting up. And what was happening before was it would go to the Raspberry Pi menu and say that it couldn't find a partition or something. So now if we swipe up and go to settings, we can see that the data partition is now 20 gig. Okay, so I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.